Good morning, children. Yes, today again we are back to our lessons now. Yes, this is about animal fiber. Last year already you have come across about the fibers. What are the different kinds of fibers, children? There are two types of fibers. Before going to the fibers, what are fibers first? Fibers are the tiny strand-like structures are called as fibers. So the two types of fibers are and natural fibers and artificial fibers. Natural fibers are the fibers that we get from plants or animals. Isn't it? So the fibers that we get from plants are cotton, jute. Is it clear? And the aloe vera fiber. Also they will be taking the coconut fiber, aloe vera fiber. These are all the different types of fibers that we get from the plants. And the fibers that we get from the animals are wool, silk and the fibers that we also get from camel also we get the fibers from goat, camel, yak. These are also, they also produce the fibers. Now coming to the session of animal fibers only for in your class junior lesson that is about the animal fibers we are going to deal about. The animal fibers are silk and wool. The silk what is this? We get silk from the silkworm. Where do we get wool from? We get wool from sheep, goat, yak, camel, llama, etc. These are the different animals from which we get the wool. Present lesson, I today's topic is about the silk. How the silk is manufactured? Where do we get silk from? Which in where? So, what is the different? The topic includes different places where the silk industries are being developed in our state. And so, this this part of the lesson is being covered here in this animal fiber about the silk. Today, I'll tell you about the life cycle of silk. Okay, children, come on, be ready. Before entering into the life cycle of silk, I want to tell you there are special terms in this lesson that you have to keep keen interest and also learn them well. Okay, ma? So, the life cycle of silkworm. What does the life cycle of silkworm consist of? This life cycle of silkworm consists of four stages. They are egg, larva, pupa, Imago. What are the different stages in the life cycle of silkworm? Egg, larva, pupa, and the last one is imago or adult stage. It is also called as adult stage or imago. Pupa is also called as cocoon stage. What is called as cocoon stage? The first stage is egg stage. The second one larva stage or caterpillar stage. Pupa, the third one is pupa or cocoon stage and the last one is imago or adult stage. So now, what do the silkworm weavers do to get the silk at these four stages of silkworm? You already know that we get silk from the silkworm. Basically, the scientific name of silkworm is called as Bombyx mori. General in the local terminology in our state especially the silk moths from which we get the silk they are known as chilakalu. What are the silk moths called ma? Chilakalu. C-H-I-L-A-K-A-L-U. Chilakalu. The silk moth, the adult silk moth which are ready to lay eggs they are called as chilakalu. So the silk moth they Keep the silk. The silk moth, they give the silk. They lay eggs. Is it clear? So, in the life cycle of silk, silk worm, the first stage is egg stage. See. This is eggs. This drawing is very important, ma. Life cycle of silk worm. The next stage is larval stage, you know, I'm drawing here, see carefully. This is the stages of larva, I'm going to draw here, children. So, listen carefully and see the board. Understand how to draw each stage of the larva. It's very important, ma, this question. This is the larva stage. It's also called as caterpillar stage.
It's also called as caterpillar stage. You have to draw in your notes today. It's very important, children. Did you understand? get an idea of how to draw the larva stage. The board is smaller one mark. I think you can easily understand to some extent. I'll show you the picture also. So these are the stages of larva, leg stage. Stages of larva. Larva is singular and larva is plural form. And the next stage is cocoon stage. Inside it, there will be the lava. Okay, this lava is present inside the cocoon. It's generally of the shape of eight. And the final stage is adult stage. This is an adult or imago. Adult or imago. This is the life cycle of silkworm. I think you can draw easily children. See the picture here also very effectively. The children last year has drawn. Is it clear children? I think you can easily see it and know how it is. Okay. Is it clear ma for you all? Uh, visible, I think so. You practice it at home. So this is the egg stage. Now we'll continue the lesson now. How it is about the how the weavers weave the silk, how they get the silk from the silk moths. You know that the silk moths are called as Bombyx mori. In the local language, they are called chilakalu. They lay eggs. So the silk moths which are ready to lay eggs are sold, are called at the place where they are sold, are called as greenages. So, now the first, the term greenages we have to learn. This is a new term for you. What is the word? Greenages. Here yeah, this place is very insufficient, ma. So, I am raising the diagram. You can also see again, I think so, as it is a video class for you. So, the place with the silk moth ready to lay eggs is called as greenages place where Silk moth eggs are sold. Silk moth eggs are sold. They are called as greenages. 
the silk worm we the silk weavers they buy the eggs from the greenages and they keep them in a special wire mesh for few days until they turn to the larva stage or uh, when they turn to the larva stage they start eating the mulberry leaves so they also plant some of the weavers they have the mulberry god and uh, they uh, grow the mulberry leaf, get the mulberry leaves from their garden and feed these larvae with the mulberry leaves finally chopped leaves they keep in a special large sized frame cane frames they are called as chandrikalu the large sized cane frames they are called as chandrikalu what are they called as chandrikalu large sized cane frames they are called as chandrikalu is it clear children next after they keep them in this in the large sized cane frames that are called as chandrikalu they keep them with the uh, leaves that are finely chopped mulberry leaves over this tray and keep these uh, larvae over them for days together for a month or so so that they develop into the fully grown larva when the larva grows fully it stops eating the mulberry leaves and starts secreting a fluid from its mouth and surrounds around its mouth so while secreting the fluid it surrounds its mouth this fluid when exposed to air it becomes strong so when completely it surrounds around its body it takes period of time and then it is called as pattukayalu which is called as cocoon stage so you have understood now greenages chandrikalu next term is pattukayalu cocoons are also called as pattukayalu they are called as pattukayalu so at this stage what do the weavers do they do not allow the larva that is present inside the cocoon to develop into the adult stage what do they do then they kill the larva the process of killing the larva inside the cocoon is called stifling process what is the process called as stifling process why do they do stifling process we have to know now what is called stifling process killing of larva inside the cocoon killing of larva inside the cocoon is called as stifling process i think you have understood ma what are cocoons pattukayalu what is stifling process killing the larva inside the cocoon is called as stifling process why do the stifle ma'am you may get the doubt stifling is a process done to kill the larva or otherwise the larva turns to adult stage and peers open the body of the cocoon and cannot get the silk thread continuous silk thread we can get the silk but it is a not continuous so it is not useful to weave a fine fabric okay ma that's why the stifling process is done how this stifling process is done why it is done to get the continuous silk thread how this process is done now you are going to learn so stifling is done by the process uh, by, st during the stifling process the silk cocoons are kept in a hot woven and steamed for about 15 minutes then what happens when the cocoons are steamed cocoons are kept in hot oven and steamed for about 15 minutes the larva present inside the cocoon is killed that is called as stifling i told you before so in this process of stifling when the cocoons are boiled in the hot oven for about 15 minutes that is steamed for about 15 minutes and the larva is killed then what do they do they take this hot cocoons or the pattukayalu and keep it in the hot bath water bath hot bath then this cocoons are kept in hot water bath is it clear ma so boil they boil them due to this boiling what happens the thread loosens the silk that thread over the cocoons it loosens so it loosens the thread which loosens the thread so so that you get the silk easily so in the stifling process the cocoon the larva is killed and the uh, cocoons uh, when they are kept in hot bath the thread becomes loose and which is uh, which became strong due to the exposure of the air okay children then they hold upon the one end of the thread and uh, drag it and 
wind it over the reelers. So this reelers or the reeling machines are used to drag the silk thread from the cocoons. So the process of obtaining the silk from the silk cocoons are called as a reeling process. What is reeling process children? Now next term I told you. Stiffling process. Next one is reeling process. Reeling process. Different uh, definitions. What is what we have to learn in this lesson. So reeling process. Obtaining silk from the Silk cocoon is called as reeling process. Obtaining silk from silk cocoon is called as reeling process. Did you understand children now? So after the reeling process, what do the silk weavers do? They take the silk thread and re reel over the reeling machines and these reeling machines are put over the weavers and they weave the silk cloth. This is how the manufacture of silk cloth is being done. Is it clear children? I hope you have understood the lesson clearly and write the, uh, draw the uh, life cycle of silk worm in your notes and be ready for the next class children. Hope you understood well. Thank you very much. Bye children.